Hey everybody and welcome to another screencast. Uh, last week we started a, a, a new series on uh, installing and uh, running an, a Laravel application using Vue and we did that using the framework Inertia JS. Um, and I explained last week about how Inertia is a great framework if you're looking to build a Vue application or a Vue front end on your Laravel application. And this week we're going to look a wee bit at uh, the authentication side of things, which is usually kind of the first thing that you come across when you want to build an app in Laravel. You want to be able to register users, sign them up, and uh, yeah, just do all the kind of that good stuff. So I'm just going to jump in, and uh, I'm just going to um, explain a bit about what we're going to do today. So uh, if you remember last time when we set up Inertia, this is where we got to. So we had this web file in the roots folder and we had uh, just this inertia render method which renders this welcome uh, view component and we passed in some data and this is the component here it literally just takes a title as a prop and it displays it on the page and if you remember we also had this uh, blade layout file that we needed to set up which is very minimalistic it literally just includes some the the css js and this inertia tag which is all inertia needs to render out the view components so that's where we got to. This is what it looks like. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, get set up with authentication. So registering users and logging in users. Now, thankfully, Laravel really has us sorted with this stuff because obviously it's such a common thing that developers have to do when they build Laravel apps that uh, Laravel actually comes with preset starter kits, they call them, for setting up a authentication in Laravel. And there's actually a bunch of different ones. So there's kind of two levels. One, the first one is called Laravel Breeze, which literally just sets up uh, your kind of routing um, for authenticating users, uh, letting them log in, register, email verification, and resetting your password. So that's kind of what uh, Laravel B Breeze includes. And then if you want to go even further, they also have Laravel Jetstream, which is like a full-blown uh, scaffolding, I guess, framework for a, a SaaS app. So it has all sorts of features in it. Uh, if you go to the Jetstream documentation, like this has authentication, registration profile management, two-factor authentication, API stuff. It's got um, support for teams and all that good stuff. So if you're really wanting to get a, a big head start in, in building your application and scaffolding it out, uh, I'd recommend having a look at Jetstream. But if you're not wanting all of the stuff that comes with that, and you're just wanting kind of a more slim down, just uh, the authentication and nothing else, then Laravel Breeze is a great place to start. And um, so this actually used to be this kind of scaffolding code and, and stuff that's in the Breeze um, package actually used to be built into Laravel. And then they, they kind of a few years ago, they broke it out and it, it was called UI, I think. They had a package called UI and, and you had to install it separately and now it's called Breeze. But yeah, it, setting up Breeze is dead simple. So we're just going to um, follow these instructions. So last time, if you remember, I'll just go across here and remember, this is just a default Laravel app. There's really not much all that we've done to it other than install Inertia.js and Vue. And we have this welcome component and in, in our roots file, um, we have this you know render method. That's really all there is to it at the moment. So um, we're going to go ahead and install Breeze. Before we do that, I'm just going to double check to see if we have Laravel Sale installed here. We do because we're going to need a database. So if you remember last time, what I've done here is I just literally ran the artisan serve command. And just to explain, I have an alias set up from this artisan um, <laughs> command. Usually it's PHP artisan, but I've got an alias set up so I can just drop the PHP. But yeah, Laravel has a built-in serve command which runs a kind of server for you, which is great. And it lets you view the page. But as soon as you need a database, which we're about to need, this feels this falls down a bit because you need to then set up a separate database and, and all that other jazz. But thankfully, another thing that Laravel comes with out of the box now is a thing called Laravel Sale. And um, if you've never seen Laravel Sale, it's, it's definitely worth um, looking at and, and using it. it, it it comes out of the box. It's kind of Laravel's almost recommended way to run Laravel in local de development environments now. And it uses Docker. And so if you haven't used Docker before, this might take a bit of uh, figuring out. But if you have used Docker before, it's, it's great. It, it really makes it easy to run Laravel in its own separate environment with all its own um, bits and pieces. And, and like I say, it comes with the, the Laravel installer now. So um, you literally have to run one command and you have Laravel up and running on your local host with a database, with Redis, with all the other bits and pieces that you need. Um, and just to just to kind of show you um, what that looks like. Oh, maybe I don't have it installed. Okay, I don't have it installed in this. So I do have, it does come with it. I'll just double check that it is installed. So it's installed in my um, 
uh, composer.json, but I don't actually have it set up yet. So let's actually just go ahead and do that. Let's just set up sale um, because we're going to need this for our database. So you can see when you set up sale, it asks you what you would like to install. We only really need a database at the moment. Obviously, there's lots of other bits and pieces that you can install. Uh, some of the ones I recommend is Redis for caching and uh, Mailhog for, for mail. But well, why, why don't we? We'll just install those ones as well. So we want zero for MySQL, three for Redis, and what did we say? Seven for Mailhog. And so it's scaffold out. So um, what this does is it generates a Docker Compose file. And again, if you know Docker, you'll understand what this is doing. But this just uh, kind of lays out all the containers that we need in our, our Docker setup. So we have one for each of those things. We've got Laravel test, which is the main app. It's running Laravel. It's running at PHP 8, which is what the sale 8 image is, which has been built from a Docker file in the, the Laravel sale folder. It's got some ports and configuration networks, all that good stuff. And then we have MySQL, which is our database. Uh, and then Redis and Mailhog are the other things we've just picked. Um, so just to explain that's what's happening there. So instead of running artisan serve now, what I can do is run sail up. And uh, hopefully what will happen is you'll see um, uh, Redis uh, uh, sail running, but it's not because of an issue port is already allocated. This is because I'm already running sail in another project. So excuse me two seconds. Sorry about that, I had to um, sail running on another project and so it was failing to bind these ports that we need. So I'm trying that again. Actually, just before I do that, I'm just gonna double check that my end file is set up here because there is a couple of things we need to do in the end file. One thing you need to do is make sure your DB host is set to MySQL because otherwise it'll look for the database outside of the container. The other one you need is Redis host set to Redis as well. Um, so it speaks the right thing and Mailhog's already set up. So as I said, Laravel's already set up for sale out of the box. You shouldn't really need to change anything here. So if I run sale up now, hopefully what should happen is that it should, all the containers should come up and, uh, and there we go. And this is the, the kind of real-time logging. So you can see it's MySQL and, and all sorts of, uh, doing all sorts of stuff in the background here. But if I now reload localhost, and it should be running on port, port 80. So if I just put in localhost, I should see the same thing. That's it. So our error, our uh, app is uh, up and running using Laravel sale. And if I refresh this, you should see the logs updating as they, uh, as they load uh, the files. So that's Laravel sale. That was kind of as an aside. But back to Laravel Breeze, and uh, what we want to do here is just install Laravel Breeze. So we're going to go back here, and now we have a database set up, which is kind of the main thing. So if I am um, uh, just to just to demonstrate that it does actually work, if I run sale, and remember when you're running commands, uh, when sales running, and you want to run commands on the containers, you can use the sale alias. By default, it's you know it's it's vendor bin sale. Uh, but again, I've got an alias set up to, to make that shorter. Um, so we run sale and otherwise the commands are just like you would normally do. So it's sale composer or sale artisan. Um, and we'll just run migrate just to make sure that the, the database is up and running, which it is, so that's fine. So let's install then Laravel Breeze. This comes as a composer package. So again, sale composer require Laravel Breeze. That's great, and the package is installed. And then what we need to do is run Breeze install. Now this is going to overwrite some of the files that we've already generated. Breeze sets up this kind of scaffolding for your uh, front end. So it's going to change our app.js file and our web, uh, our, our mix config file. And it's going to change a few different bits and pieces. But that's okay, we want it to do that. But just be aware that if you're installing this on an existing application, you might have to go back and change some things and, and yeah, or, or set it up manually. So this is really to be installed on, on fresh uh, new applications, because otherwise it's going to conflict with some of the stuff you already have. But anyway, we're just going to run this command and it's going to install our things. So um, let's just cover, before we, we run the install for this, let's just look at some of the things that Breeze has done here. So if I go to my package.json file, you can see that it's installed a bunch of uh, dependencies. So we've got Tailwind's installed, Alpine's installed, Axios is installed, and, and Vue and uh, the Inertia stuff is already here. Actually, do you know what I've just realized? Um, I forgot the Vue flag. Let's run that again and we'll install it in Vue. So just to explain what's happening here is you can install it on a plain, you know, kind of as a, as a plain install and it'll use blade templates and a lot kind of thing if you use this, the default command. But um, it does also have support for the Laravel starter kits. 
uh, and it has you know like view and react options so yeah um, so back in the package.json file you can see here that it's installed all sorts of all the stuff that we need for breeze that breeze needs so it includes tailwind it actually includes um view and inertia uh, although we have already got that installed it's kind of included it in the dev dependency so we could actually just get rid of this now and what else has it done so i said it would change our app.js file so you can see that it's um, reset this file now and it has that all the kind of setup that we did last time pretty much the, ex the exact same thing it's just that it's you know kind of reconfigured this file you know to work out of the box the other thing it's done is it's up updated our mix config. So if I go to webpack.mix.js, you'll see that it, uh, again, it's it's changed all this um, configuration, but not too dissimilar to the stuff that we did in the last episode. We, we now compile with Vue. It's installed these Tailwind packages to, to process the CSS. And it's also created this webpack.config file. And if I just look in there, you'll see that all that that's doing is it's created an alias at. So if we want to import a package from the from our root, we can use the, the kind of at prefix, but don't worry too much about that. So now if I um, run yarn or npm install, it's going to set up all the new packages for us. And then I need to run yarn dev or npm run dev to actually compile our uh, JavaScript and CSS. And the last thing we need to do, according to the instructions, is to run the migrations again, um, because Breeze obviously comes with some uh, database table changes. So I'm just going to run the migrate command again. Oh, I didn't, and it didn't need migrate because we'd already run it. So that's fine. So Breeze should now be installed. So if I go back to my localhost page and refresh, there we have it. So. Um, let's just have a quick look at what it did to our files. So if I go back to our uh, web file, you can see what's happened here is that it's replaced our, our welcome page with its own version. Um, and it has this data that it's passed into it for the splash page. And it's also added this dashboard route that is behind an authentication uh, middleware. So you have to be logged in to access this dashboard page. And it also has included this .auth file in the same folder, which is all the routes that are required, all the routing that's required for all of the authentication pages. So you can see your register, login, forgot password, reset password, verify email, all that good stuff. But you don't need to worry too much about that. This is all just kind of part of what Breeze uh, does out of the box for you. So that's, that's all great. You'll see that um, if we go into controllers and auth, you'll see all the controllers that have been created for all these different things, you know, password, you know, a recent password, email verification, registering users and all that, uh, all that stuff. So all the controllers are there, um, which is great. And uh, I guess it should also have overwritten our inertia request middleware. We'll see if there's anything in here. Yeah, the other thing it does here is it overwrites this file and it adds this auth user um, variable now if you remember last time what I said happens in the middle the, the inertia middleware is this share method is basically like a, a kind of global variable or a place to share global variables and view components so this data will be passed to um, every instance uh, or every page that's loaded in view and all we're doing here is basically just saying you know if the user is logged in pass the user in this uh, variable so we'll look at that in a minute and if we go to our um, views you'll see that um, there's a there's a dashboard and welcome uh, blade views here, but that's because I ran the, the, the breeze command before uh, the one without the view uh, flag. Um, so we can ignore them. We can actually delete them, but I'll just leave them for just now. In fact, no, actually, let's just delete these because we don't need them. But what we should see is that uh, in our JS pages, remember we set this up last time, there's now all these new views for all the other, uh, the view pages and uh, uh, the inertia pages that we, that we need for authentication. Um, forgot password login all these things and as well as our new welcome page which is this splash page here this is what we're looking at right here something it looks like yes yes lens complaining about something but um so this is a splash page that we see um and then this dashboard page as well which is obviously the page that's going to load once we've logged in so that's a quick rundown of all the things that breeze has changed for us the other thing it's it's done here is generated two layouts one for we'll see the the, the welcome page we'll use the the guest layout and or does it actually no maybe, maybe it doesn't but the dashboard should use yeah the authenticated layout so maybe i thought it used the guest layout by default maybe it doesn't but the the authenticated layout um, is basically the, the app dashboard again we'll see that once we log in and yeah it has all the you know kind of navigation for the dashboard and that kind of thing but the other thing that we hopefully should see in here if you remember what i said about the inertia uh, middleware is that 
it adds these authenticated user. It's kind of a global variable. And I'm sure in here somewhere we should be able to see that. Uh, yeah, there we go. So page props auth username. So if you remember in the inertia middleware, see so we had this variable auth user and so it's shared with all these view pages now automatically. If I go back to the authenticated layout, you can see how we actually access that. So this inertia has this uh, idea of dollar pages like a top level page object um, and it has these props that are passed in from the back end and its auth user is the, user, the authenticated user. Um, so let's actually see that uh, working. So if I um, go to register here and I'm just going to register using some uh, dummy data, we should be able to see the dashboard layout. Um, so this is the, the dashboard page with the authenticated layout that we were speaking about. Now there's nothing in here yet. All we can do here is log out. It shows our name, it shows the dashboard page and we can log out. But that's that kind of gives you the starting point. So you can use this authenticated layout to create your pages. And if I go to the dashboard component, you can see how we do this. So it has this Breeze authentic authenticated layout. It's the tag. And remember I said about the app prefix in our Webpack configs, that just means from the root load the layouts authenticated view page and so that's our our layout component and this is how we use it and there's a slot here for the header and yeah the, the the kind of content of the page so this is the bit that you would replace with whatever it is that you're going to do with the app so that's breeze that's it installed you know it's got login pages got forgot your password email password reset links all that kind of thing and yeah that so that's it really, that's that's the kind of authentication side of our app. And hopefully you'll see how easy it makes to, to get up and running with an authenticated app in Laravel using Inertia. Um, it really does a lot of the work for us out of the box and it changes a lot of stuff for us, but that's okay because we need to, otherwise we'd have to, if you think about it, we'd have to build all of this stuff ourselves, all of these authentication pages and the controllers and the middleware and all this stuff just comes straight out of the box with Breeze. So it really does make it a breeze, funnily enough. Um, so that's authentication with uh, Laravel and Inertia. Uh, so hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully you've enjoyed that and uh, hopefully uh, it's been interesting and uh, next week we'll get on and uh, try and build something in our dashboard and instead of just having the, the kind of default you are logged in message we'll actually try and put something in here uh, so until then have a good day